Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be trying to answer a somewhat difficult question to answer, and specifically it's a question about the universe. And the question is, so what shape is our universe anyway? Well, let's find out using Space Engine and a few other tools. Welcome to What The Math. So right now in Space Engine, we are actually are flying through space, seeing a lot of galaxies blink in front of our eyes. But what you're seeing right now is actually a somewhat simple misrepresentation of what space-time actually looks like. This is a human understanding of space-time, but reality is a lot more complicated, where things are basically all twisted and turned and really look more something like... Something really weird and uneven, something that might even look th like this. Basically, the three dimensions that we're used to are not really three dimensional at all. There's a lot of twists, a lot of turns, and a lot of very unusual structures inside of our universe. And this is something we'll probably not really be able to understand and discover for a very, very long time, mostly because it's kind of difficult for us to perceive these unusual dimensions. But there is one thing about the shape of the universe we can discover that is in our capabilities, and this is using mathematics and something known as the Hubble constant, basically the expansion of the universe uh, with distance away from the central point. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the actual um, Hubble constant, but we are going to talk about what we've discovered in the last few years. Now, according to most modern theories, uh, there are really three parameters that define the shape of the universe. One of them is whether the universe is finite or infinite, basically if it has an end or not. In this case, in this particular simulation, it does have an end and we can totally reach it. Uh, is it flat, has no curvature? Is it open, has negative curvature? Or is it closed, has positive curvature? And let me actually demonstrate this by showing you a simple picture where the actual curvature is explained in quite an interesting way. Basically, if you have two flies in a zero curvature or a flat curvature, they'll basically always be parallel. If it's a positive curvature, they'll kind of eventually at some point come together. And if it's negative curvature, they'll actually fly apart. And interestingly, this also kind of defines the amount of matter present in the universe. Now, as a matter of fact, if there's not enough matter and if the actual uh, universe is going to be expanding forever and accelerating expansion because there's not enough matter, it's going to look like this. It's going to have this very unusual saddle shape. If, however, there is um, a lot of matter and at some point the universe will stop expanding and then start contracting and eventually result in something known as the big crunch, it possibly has this positive curvature. And if it has a relatively equal amount of matter and at some point will just stop expanding, it probably has a zero curvature. There's actually another way of looking at this using uh, triangles drawn in three dimensions. And so here, if I were to draw a triangle um, in a curvature that basically is spherical, the triangle would actually have angles that are going to be larger than 180 degrees. And this, this is exactly what would happen if you were to draw triangles on Earth, for example. If I were to stand on one location, another location, and another location, the actual angles will add up to more than 180 degrees. If, however, it's a saddle shape, this triangle will have um, curvature, or I guess total uh, addition of angles of less than 180, and here the triangle will actually be 180. And so this by itself can be calculated using this particular value, and this actually has a name. This value known as omega is also known as the density parameter, which is basically defined as the ratio of the actual or observed density to the critical density calculated using uh, various values, like for example, the Hubble constant. And by dividing the actual or observed by the theoretical, you'll get the number either that's going to be more than one, less than one, or just one, if those two values are equal. Now here, uh, the actual math that is used to calculate these values can be found on Wikipedia and a lot of other resources, but the idea, or I guess the conclusion is that the um, calculated value of this omega is approximately 1, plus minus 2%. 
this being the statistical error that is usually used in science. So what does this actually mean? Well, what this actually suggests is that it seems that the universe or the global universe, the universe we live in, is basically flat and very likely also infinite. In other words, it has just enough matter to one day stop expanding and to kind of stay that way. Although a lot of this is still not obviously certain, but this basically gives us a kind of an idea that in our humongous, tremendously large universe where our beautiful Earth is located, uh, the actual shape or the underlying shape of everything seems to be more or less flat. It's not curved in any way and it seems to possibly be infinite. Now this doesn't really explain a lot of other things about our universe such, such as for example various twists and turns and various types of topologies caused by dark matter, by supermassive black holes and so on. And it doesn't really tell us exactly what it means by infinite universe or whether it actually has a boundary or just keeps going forever and then loops on itself. But what it does tell us is that the universe, for the most part, if you were to look at it from the outside, would actually look more or less flat, assuming that you turn three dimensions into two dimensions. Now, obviously, we can't really see the entire universe, mostly because of the speed of light. As a matter of fact, our viewing uh, parameters are currently limited to about 13 point billion uh, light uh, years from, from our planet Earth, and so we can't really see that far. But theoretically speaking, it seems that maybe just maybe universe is kind of infinite. Now, obviously, this may not make sense to us poor little humans, and it might take us a few decades to figure all of this out. And also, don't forget that there's still a bit of a margin of error, specifically maybe about 0.4% margin of error, where we might actually be wrong and the universe might actually have some sort of a curvature. But for now, all we know is that this is a very, very big place. It is basically practically infinite. And most importantly is that it's flat. So if two things were flying in parallel, they would keep flying in parallel forever. They would not eventually join or fly away from each other. Anyway, so that hopefully explains a little bit more about the curvature of the universe. And if you actually want to learn the details and you want to find out a lot more about exactly what's happening here and uh, what the universe shape actually means and how we calculate all of this, check out this really cool lesson from Brilliant.org, the official sponsor of this video. I actually wanted to show you this because this lesson taught me a lot about uh, cosmology as well and actually taught me some of the things about the universe and the shape of the universe that I never actually knew myself. Check it out, it's a pretty cool course, it actually explains things to you visually, it asks you a lot of questions that you can either answer or just look at the solution if you don't really know the answer, but that way you'll actually learn as well. But most importantly, you'll get to find out about how we discovered the shape of the universe and the math behind it. And all of it is very, very well explained, including the fact that despite the math here being difficult, they explain it so well. Anyway, check this out and other lessons that they have in the astronomy and cosmology and subscribe to this channel if you still haven't. Check out some of the other videos. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. And let's actually go and check out the source of a tremendous curvature in our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star, a supermassive black hole right in the middle of our galaxy. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And here we are with this tremendously large giant that's about to appear right in front of you. And so here we are, jumping right in front of the supermassive giant that's creating a lot of curvature in our own galaxy. Sagittarius A star. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.